What's going on beautiful people? So I'm currently midway for a water change on the Crebensis tank. I don't know why I'm doing that. I've just stopped for a minute and thought, why am I doing this? I'm about to move them across into the new African River Aquarium, which I'm looking at right now and is almost done. I can't show you it yet though. That is coming in the next build video, which is after this video. It's not quite there. I wanted to make sure that I did this one in a full build for you guys. There's so much work gone into it. That's why I've not uploaded so much this week, but it's well worth it. It's gonna be absolutely epic. So one of the main reasons I wanted to create the African River Tank is for my Crebensis. They've got a ton of babies and they need a new home. <laughs> there we go, look, well, at least that's nice and clean for you for like a couple of hours anyway. <laughs> They're getting a good size now, aren't they? Look, let me put my, look, there's my finger up against, well, they're still tiny, aren't they? They're so cute though. And some are, are much bigger than other, well not much, but like some are like particularly sort of crebensis looking. Like these ones are all pretty similar looking, but every now and again, like that one, look, massive bullhead on him. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe he's gonna be a male, um, but who knows? Every, like every one in sort of eight is bigger. Not by a huge amount, but you know, just enough for me to notice when I'm looking at them quite regularly. And also some of them are starting to get some different colorations on them as well. It's really hard to pick out on camera because you've got to get the right lighting. But uh, yeah, they really are growing up. I'm so looking forward to seeing how they behave in their new aquarium, which is obviously twice, no, three times as big as this one in water volume. So the Platy Mountain Tank has become a bit of a crowd favorite. It's doing great. It's going from strength to strength. Plants are all growing back nicely after the last trim. The algae on the rocks, well, it's still there. It's, dying. it's coming back slowly. I'm not in any rush for it to go. I mean, it looks quite authentic, to be honest, doesn't it? Like uh, sort of grass on the, uh, on the mountains. Fish are all good as well. I've seen quite a lot of new babies swimming down the bottom. But in a tank like this, there's not a huge amount of cover, which means they can be picked off quite easy. And the parents do tend to eat their young as well. But there's no doubt, to be honest, platys have so many babies that some will definitely survive. So the tank is really starting to look spot on. I'm really pleased that I've managed to keep a sense of scale going through the scape. And since the trim back last time on the pearl weed, it's just starting to grow new tips look. And they're just really adding to all of this. It looks so good, doesn't it? Little mini trees on top of the mountain. The fish seem to be really enjoying the scape as well. So they're constantly going around grazing on everything. I mean, hopefully they'll graze a little bit more because I'd just like to drop the algae levels a little bit. It's basically green spot on algae on all the rocks. There was barely any on the glass, but you can actually see trails on the rocks on the bottom there where the snails have been. So yeah, their snails have been doing a good job. Look, you can see on that rock there, there's like chunks of uh, algae missing. And all up this side wall here as well on these rocks, They've basically cleaned that all off. I think a lot of it's the neurites now, to be honest. So yeah, they are getting through it. I mean, I'm not in any sort of big rush to get it all clear. So we'll take our time of it. It's really, really getting there though. So far, I've not really been seeing the Amano shrimp in the day. I think I've seen them once. So they're coming out at night time, pecking away. And as I said to you guys before, I know this because uh, all the sand in the pathway in the middle is nice and clear. Now that wouldn't be the uh, snails and that wouldn't be the fish either. So it's got to be the Amanos. You might also notice that the tank is currently looking brighter than it was before. And that's because I've lowered the light. So it was sat like three times as high as this. And I brought it down to this level because I feel it's going to, you know, give the plants a lot more light obviously <laughs> now of course one of the dangers of this is that it causes the algae to get worse in a tank on the rocks but i'm hoping not now previously my discus tank had something similar going on now first of all i lowered one of the lights and then i added a second light and the tank absolutely took off and looks so so good now what happened was the plants were receiving more than enough light to grow like really quickly they're drawing in all of the nutrients so there's none left for the algae that's the theory anyway hopefully that carries over to the platy mountain tank and speaking of the discus there's definitely something going on at the back here look at that look see that male there seeing off the other male and the female appears to be protecting this area and both of them look, are darkened up the other male is darkened up as well the one in the, the closest to us here just behind these oranges they're all getting ready to spawn and do something look see them off this is my female. 
And when you look at the sort of overall position of where they are, it might be a really good place to be able to defend some eggs. Previously, the discus had just laid on this sort of pipe here, and it could be easily picked off, can't it? But I've just done a 40% water change and all of a sudden it seems to have triggered this behavior. Also recently, I did a huge trim up of the whole tank and I've exposed a load of the swords at the back there. And obviously looking at those areas thinking, oh, this is a good spot here for some eggs. So come on guys, do the business for me. You can do this. Nice little patch at the back there. Some eggs, oh, it'd be so cool to see some real discus wigglers in the, in the tank, wouldn't it? So recently I set up this tank here for my golden ram and I'm not kidding you, sometimes I do exaggerate, but this time this is the most successful tank I've ever set up, ever. Ever. First of all, let's just admire this absolutely beautiful golden ram for those of you that haven't seen. What a stunner. Of course, not to forget as well, I've got five of the Ember Tetras in here as well, which really do sort of um, add to it. Definitely do. I mean, I need a bigger school for sure. I've only got five. I think we want about 20 really for a tank this size. Because look, when you step back like this, you can't really see them that well, can you? So what is making me say that this has been my absolute best tank start to date? Well, first of all, it's been nearly a week now and there's no sign of any algae at all, not even on the glass. Now, the only plant that has got a little bit of algae on it is this plant here. This is a Rotundifolia HRA. Um, it will go more red as time goes by, but look, you can see there's a little bit of hair algae on there. That isn't from this tank. That was from a previous tank that that plant was in, and that is dying, which is good. It's starting to get sort of misty look to it. That means it's not surviving. But the thing that is impressing me the most is the Monte Carlo and HC Cuba. Look at it, it's starting to carpet already. So if we come in really close here, you can see that it's sending roots down into the substrate and the HC Cuba is doing the same. Now I'm not running any CO2 on this tank or any of my tanks, to be honest. I really like the challenge of trying to do it sort of low tech style. Now, not only is the HC Cuba on the substrate starting to anchor down with its roots, we've also got some up here that I just placed into the wood. It still had a little bit of its rock wall on and then I just pressed it into a gap. But if we take a little closer look, you can again see the roots trying to grow downwards. This is awesome. I, I wasn't sure if this would work, but it really does seem to be doing so at the moment. Oh look, perfect. Look who's coming to the picture. Isn't he absolutely amazing, guys? This is my golden ram. Look at those blues. He knows, he knows I'm filming, look, and he's just like, well, I definitely should get in the shot, shouldn't I? <laughs> So what's the secret then? Why am I getting such good growth? Now I did an experiment with this tank and for the first time ever I used pond compost. So designed for pond plants, you put them in a basket and then the plants in the pond grow. They look great. So I thought, why not put some of that stuff into the bottom of the tank? Now granted, this isn't for everyone because it does mean that once the sand's locked on, you don't move it, disturb it, otherwise you're gonna have a problem. And there's no doubt about it, Aquasoil would definitely be a really good choice, but so far, in terms of a dirted tank, this is the best results I've ever had from the start. And I think to be honest, the plant quality, the plant vibrancy is all speaking for itself. So right here is the Rotala macrandra, I think that's how I pronounce it. And I actually took this out of my discus aquarium, planted it about three days ago. And if you look here, there's already got an extra two inches on top. It's growing straight away, it's staying nice and red, really happy because apparently this is an advanced plant to grow, but we're doing great so far. And also the S Repens is doing so good. It's growing, it's staying vibrant and green. I am so, so happy. I tell you what, this is making me want to do another dirty tank with this compost just to make sure I didn't fluke it. Now fortunately the ram tank isn't the only one doing fantastic on this shelf here. My sparkling grammy tank, which by the way has been set up in a completely different way, is going absolutely fantastic. It just goes to show there's more than one way to skin a cat. I don't think anyone should skin cats, and I hate that saying. Anyway, apart from a tiny little bit of algae on the glass, everything else is great. It's actually due for another trim as well, so let's do that quickly. The moss is looking so good, but we have to trim it back or it'll just turn into an absolute bomb of <laughs> moss everywhere, and before you know it, take over the whole tank. So we've got some good little inhabitants of this tank. We've obviously got the sparkling grammys taking center stage, and there's also a male endler and two female endlers. And after trying to keep them in focus for quite a while, I gave up in the end. <laughs> There's also a nice collection of ramswan snails, which this sparkling grammy seems to be paying particular interest to. Mm -hmm. 
Now there are of course several ways you can trim your moss as there is with everything. One method is that you take a little suction pipe, keep it close to where you're trimming so that all the little bits you trim off go down the pipe and don't get trapped anywhere in the aquascape. Or there's my method, which is you take a little pair of normal scissors, even though you've got proper aquascaping ones, and you just go to town on it. <laughs> I don't hold back, just go for it, just hack it all up. And then what I like to do afterwards is just get my little net and scoop it all out. This is probably not the best way, but it works. So hopefully you can see there that the method works really good. The mosses look super tidy and they'll grow back nice and thick and dense again in no time. And lo and behold, the substrate isn't absolutely covered in little trimmings of moss. That's one thing I particularly have to be careful with in this aquarium because I don't have any quarries or anything to disturb the substrate. What I do have though is a little collection of Amanos. I think there's about five in here and they do a great job of keeping all the uh, sort of thread algae and all the bits down. I don't really know what I mean by bits, but hopefully you do. <laughs> Our Java fern in this scape is also growing back really nicely. A little bit of it did die off, but you can see now all these new leaves have sprouted out and they're looking so vibrant green and just, oh, it looks so lush, doesn't it? So I only did the trim back of this tank about a week ago and already look, you guessed it, the pearl weed is back. Weed by name, weed by nature, this stuff grows so fast. Look, I don't really mind though because the look of the whole tank is just great, isn't it? So now from some of the best setups I've ever done, well, the initial phases anyway, to one of the worst. <laughs> so the German blue ram tank is not getting better. It's getting worse and worse by the day. The algae's just taken over. It looks hideous, but I wanna show you guys everything. I don't wanna hide the ugliness. You know, this, these things happen. It just goes to show that I can get two great starts and one terrible one. It's really just about finding what you did wrong or where it went wrong. And with this one, boy has it gone wrong. Look at all of that algae on the top. So I'm pretty sure I know what's happened with this tank. When I set it up, I used a load of recycled uh, substrate from previous setup. Now it was from a bin that I've not used in a long time. Now thinking back when I stored that bin, it came from a setup again that failed because I put so much dirt and uh, substrate, all these different nutrient rich ingredients all stuffed into the gravel, sand and aqua soil. So basically I've got so many variables in there that there's no way of me controlling the nutrient levels. I think what I'm gonna do with this one is take everything out put it all back in again with a brand new substrate system. I mean, the fish are doing really great and it's not hurting them at all. And to be honest, even the plants are growing, which means that they're getting enough light, they've got enough nutrients, well, they've got way too many nutrients, to be honest. They can't actually consume all the nutrients. That's why there's so much available for the algae. But hey, like I say, it doesn't all always go rosy, does it? I'm gonna learn from this. I'm not gonna be doing that again. I'm gonna be making sure that I only save substrate from successful tanks. <laughs> to be honest, there is a fine line between enough nutrients and not enough nutrients and way too much nutrients in your substrate system. But hopefully I've cracked something with this new pond compost system. I'm going to be trying something again very soon. I fancy doing a Dragonstone Iwagumi style tank um, using just that and some sand. It might not work. It might work. Who knows? <laughs> But you know what guys, I do not want to give up on the German Blue Ram jungle just yet. Yes, it looks an absolute state. It kind of looks like you can't come back, but we can, we can do this. I just need to get my hands right in there. I mean, it's even got all this weird bubbly green stuff on the surface, but I can just scoop that out with one of my shrimp nets. These allow water to pass through, but that's about it really. They just come in so useful for lots of different things. And that's disgusting. <laughs> I don't know why we view it as disgusting. I mean, it's just an organic sludge. First up, let's give the glass a scraping down so we can actually see what we're doing. And then I like to get a little pipe cleaner, which kind of looks like a miniature toilet brush. And the strategy here is just to sort of brush it through all of the plants. Like the Java fern right there, it's quite long and sort of stringy, so it works well using the brush just to brush through it. Next up, we want to do a really big water change. I'm talking like 70%. Let's get most of that waste out of the water. Well, waste, algae, detritus, bits of food, everything really. I'm going to use a smaller diameter pipe here to make sure that the water flow isn't too fast. This way I can actually target where I'm siphoning out from and pick up all those nasty little green bits of algae. You can see they're all over the substrate, all over the plants that are buried in amongst all the hardscape as well. I only really do flash water changes for tanks that are actually perfect. Well, not perfect, but you know, almost. 
Now the second most used item, or maybe the first actually, in my studio, paper towel. I like to go around at this stage and wipe down all of the glass. In this particular case, the paper towel wasn't enough, so I had to resort to the razor blade scraper as well for some green spot algae. And then one final big wipe down on all surfaces before we fill it back up again. So what I tend to do is match the temperature of the water to the tank over the sink. And then I know when I put it in and turn the ball valve, it's coming out at just the right temperature. Probably should have shown that, shouldn't I? But yeah, always check your temperature before you start the flow. And then being a large water change, we also need to make sure that we're dechlorinating the water. If I do little top ups, I don't tend to bother, but for big water changes, we do need to do it. I'm fortunate enough that there's low chlorine in my water, but some places there might be high. So I recommend you use dechlorinator all the time. And now I pull back in the shrimp there and just do one last, what I like to call a sweep up. And I just go backwards and forwards, getting any of the small particles out of the water column. And last but not least, I want to fill in this middle pathway with more gravel. A load of aquasaurs started sort of poking through. I think it's just fallen down from either side. And let's just cover it up so it looks neat again. And here is the final result for all our hard work, guys. I think I've managed to get it back to almost as good as it was when I first set it up. There is still the odd bit of algae dotted about, but hopefully that's gonna clear now in time. I've also added about six Amano shrimp to the tank, so hopefully they're gonna to get to work on the algae as well and just get rid of it completely. The rams, you can just see one disappearing at the back there, seem to have coped quite well with the traumatic event they've just been through. They are already exploring the tank, but as always, as soon as I picked up the camera, gone. <laughs> so hopefully now with the big water changes and then capping that soil as well that had some extra nutrients in it, we won't see the return of the algae. Fingers crossed anyway, if it does come back another time, I'm gonna to have to rethink this and possibly reset it up. Which as I say, I don't mind doing because it's fun. <laughs> and it would appear that this ram in the foreground has decided to make the trident fern its new bed. I mean, fish have to sleep as well, you know. <laughs> So there we have it guys, so many nice tanks set up now and restoring other tanks to their former glory. And do remember we've got the new African River Aquarium coming up shortly. That's going to be in the next video which will be tomorrow if you're watching this the day it comes out. If not then search for it. But yeah make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on for that one, it's going to be so good.